Bruce Lee once said, be like water making its way through cracks. Do not be a sheriff, but just to the object and you shall find your way around or through it. The point that Bruce Lee is trying to get across is to empty one's mind and become shapeless. True masters eventually get to a point along their martial arts journey where they no longer need to rely on any specific techniques or style. They are not bounded by the specific manners that their training has dictated and instead they become formless. This is the highest level that martial arts can hope to achieve. What's up Bacchus? It's your boy Natty Light and welcome back to another part of my King of Nashara analysis series. Today I'll be discussing none other than the number one ranked fighter, the Emperor of the Kingdom matches, the Fang of Masudo, Kano Agido. I'll be going over his backstory, appearance, personality, and of course, his fighting style. But before we get into any of that, I'm going to warn you guys that there are going to be major spoilers regarding the King and Ashura manga. I'm going to be explaining as much about the Fang as possible, which means that I will be talking about crucial plot points regarding the story. Now that you've been warned, let's jump right into the video. Kano Agido stands at 6 feet 6 and weighs in at 282 pounds. He's a heavy built man with slick black hair and noticeably has no eyebrows. He has very defined facial features and his eyes have dark lines underneath them. Considering that he also acts as a bodyguard for Katahari Masudo, Akido is usually seen in a formal black suit with a black tie. When in combat, he wears a black skin tight bodysuit that is modeled after the LZR Racer competitive swimwear. In the two years after the Kingan Annihilation Tournament ended, Akido is seen with a scar in the middle of his forehead as a result of his battle with Kuroki Gensai. He has also ditched the suit and now has a typical American biker look. There are two sides that make up the person that is Kano Agido. On one side, he is a proud, humorless, and stoic individual who is robotic-like in personality and is ignorant on all things not involving fighting. For instance, he doesn't understand pop culture references such as Zetan and Ultraman. The other side of Agido can be described as his true personality. He only began to develop his calm personality after being taken in and educated by his master, Katahari Matsudo. But when he's in the heat of battle against a strong opponent, his true nature reveals itself. He becomes much more ruthless and can even be described as animalistic. He shows much more emotion and is seen taking in pleasure as the fight gets harder. The switch in personality can be noticed when his pupils disappear and Agido begins grinning maniacally. But despite how ruthless he becomes in this state, he is still able to show restraint as seen when he was able to pull his punches against Okubo. In his natural form, Agido changes the way that he refers to himself. When translated from Japanese to English, we learn that instead of using the word I, he refers to himself as we. Similar to Gao Long, the Fang is extremely loyal to his master. He sees Katahari Mitsuo as his savior and he does his best to honor the name of the fifth Fang of Mitsuo. He does not take it lightly for anyone to insult or betray his master. After traveling to America in the aftermath of the King and Annihilation Tournament, Akido seems to have developed a more human personality. He is much more relaxed and he is even seen joking with other people. 23 years prior to the beginning of the series, Kano Agido was discovered by Katahari Masudo after being trapped in an underground chamber. It's revealed that Agido was trapped there as one of the participants of a Gu ritual. Gu is a form of sorcery practiced in ancient China. It involves placing poisonous creatures such as snakes, centipedes, and scorpions inside of a sealed jar and forcing them to cannibalize on each other. The intent is to have all of the toxins concentrated inside of a single being. The last surviving creature is the strongest one and is the host of the Kyu poison. Agido was the result of someone trying to perform a human gyu ritual. At some point during his time with Masudo, he took part in the selection process for the position of the fifth fang. It's revealed that he brutally defeated Takeyama Minoru during the selection process and gave him a permanent scar across his cheek. This is the reason why Minoru currently hates Agido. As the fifth fang of Masudo, Agido would rack up over 100 wins for his master and eventually became known as the Emperor of the King in Matches. He would go on to defeat many noble fighters such as Wakasuki Takeshi and Tokino O Tokimuchi. But what made him the Fang was not only the fact that he defeated his opponents, but that he also left an imprint of fear among those he fought. He instills a deep rooted fear into his opponents and breaks their fangs. The Fang kills the fighting spirit. He has caused many Kingan fighters to retire because of this. Kano Agido made his debut in Chapter 39 of the Kingan Ashara manga. While the other fighters were scouting each other out on the SS Kingan, Katahara Ritsudo knew that Agido was in peak condition and that it was time for him to show off what it meant to be the Fang. The Fang has his first bout in the final match of the first round. He is paired up against Ogibo Naoya who is the current reigning MMA heavyweight champ. The crowd was roaring with the Fang chants as Agido entered the arena. 
the fighter seeing him for the first time immediately recognized why he was the Emperor of the King in matches, and those who have already seen his powers trembled before him once again. 34 seconds into the match, Okibo succeeded in landing a takedown. On the ground, the two would engage in a masterclass display of grappling and showed how evenly matched the two were in terms of submissions. After bumping his opponent off of him and getting back to his feet, Agido proclaimed that he had seen enough and that Okubo would never reach his level. But much to everyone's surprise, Okubo was able to catch the thing off guard with a seemingly perfect chain of attacks that switched between both striking and grappling. After being damaged by Okubo, the Fang finally showed respect to his opponent by turning on his switch. His animalistic side had finally come out and quickly overwhelmed Okubo, ending the fight with one blow to the temple. Before landing any unnecessary blows to his already unconscious opponent, Agudo was able to show restraint despite having his primal side already unleashed. While on his way back to the locker room, he is confronted by Tokudo Oma who states that he will be the one to defeat the Fang. Being the blunt man that he is, Agudo stated that Oma had no chance of winning his block, yet alone defeating him. Agudo compared him to a small pebble along the road and quickly brought down the fighter with a kick. After Oma defeated Curry Ryan, Agudo came to the conclusion that Oma is Nico's inheritor, implying that he himself had prior experience with the Nico style. The veins on Agudo's face when he realized this seems to imply that he has bad memories concerning Nico and the Nico style. While spectating Kurgigan's size match against Setsuna, Glimpses of Agudo's animalistic side began to show. He could not contain his excitement after seeing how strong the Beard God was. Agudo has his second bout against the Thai God of War, Gao Long Wansawat. Before the match even began, Agudo had already switched to his animalistic side, stating that he could not wait a second longer. He had seen Gao Long's matches on TV and was excited to test his boxing skills against the world champion. After evilly trained jabs in the beginning, Gao Long began to overwhelm the Fang with quick consecutive punches. The Fang admits that his boxing had yet to reach Galong's level and that he was ready to change styles. But despite his attempts to use kicks and elbows, Galong's striking was at such a high level that all of the Fang's offensive options were sealed off. At this point, one would assume the Fang would start to become frustrated. He had never faced such a strong opponent before, but instead of getting frustrated, he was actually brimming with delight. He was overjoyed to be able to find an opponent that was strong enough to drive him into a corner. The Fang then proceeded to show why he was in fact the Kingan Association's strongest fighter. He showed his unique ability to evolve mid-fight and was able to form an anti galong style on the fly. The Fang's new style of fighting caused Galong to finally unleash his full power, a power so strong that not even the Fang could handle. What had started as a fight had now turned into a life and death match. The two entered a war of attrition, trading devastating blows, and as it looked like Galong was about to gain the upper hand, the Fang immediately switched into a takedown. This tactic of chaining strikes into grappling was something he copied from his previous opponent. After subplexing Gao Long, he ends the match with a strike to the jaw. As he walked away from his opponent, the Fang admitted that he never did surpass Gao Long in blows and that the Thai fighter was the strongest opponent they had ever faced. When Agudo returned back to his room, we see how ashamed he was in his performance. Not only did he have to resort to surprise attacks and fakeouts, his opponent Gao Long had broken his hand through what can only be called sheer bad luck. Even with all these factors combined, the Fang only seized a narrow victory. This fight caused the Fang to become conflicted. He had always defeated his opponent by using overwhelming strength, but this time he had to force himself to use tactics. He saw the act of using tactics as a cowardly move and was distraught. However, Masuo believed that this was the perfect opportunity for the Fang to evolve. During Kasumasa's rebellion, the Fang is seen fighting the Guardians alongside Okoya. He told Okoya not to kill any of them as those were his master's orders. Agido is perhaps one of the only people who would have been able to make the bloodthirsty Okoya comply. Before his third round match, Agudo was challenged by Omori Masamichi, one of Masuo's bodyguards, and the former Fang. Omori stated that Agudo was a liability and that this was a test to see if he was still conflicted. If Agudo lost to Omori right then and there, then he would have to give up his spot as Masuo's representative. While Hatsumi Sen was waiting for his third round opponent, it was Agudo who appeared before him. It turned out that Agudo was able to defend his spot in the tournament and that Omori taught him how to overcome his weakness. In contrast to his previous fight, the Fang assumed the stance that he was more accustomed to. The commentator said that his upright stance was a stance that he used to use when he first began to fight in the King and matches. But the audience was curious as to why the Fang would revert back to his original stance. It's revealed that Agudo had changed his fighting style. Usually he would try to defeat his opponent at their own game, such as when he tried to defeat Gao Long with boxing. That's why Hatsumi assumed that Agudo was going to let him get close where Sakito would be most effective. But the Fang had changed his strategy for this fight. 
You see, while the Fang's form of style allowed him the flexibility to come up with any move on the fly, it also had a major drawback. When presented with such a large arsenal of moves, it causes Agudo to be delayed while choosing the best course of action. Gao Long was able to take advantage of this lag and was able to attack Agudo during the time it took for him to process his actions. However, for his fight against Hatsumi, the Fang casted away both his formless style and his pride in favor of a few solid techniques. Agudo had evolved once again after overcoming this weakness. The fight with Hasumi quickly became one-sided and it was where he unleashed one of his ultimate moves, the Dragon Shot. The Fang then finished his Hatsumi with a left high kick. Later on, Agudo headed into his semifinals match against Kuroki Gensai. At this point of the tournament, all the fighters and the audience members were aware of how strong Kuroki was. What were once Fang chants had turned into cheering for both fighters because everyone knew the two were evenly matched. Despite the match starting off with neither combatant moving, everyone in the arena could feel the tension in the air. The two were in a contest of predictions, trying to see who could read more moves ahead of their opponent. Once they did begin to move, the two were evenly matched. They traded blows and were dodging each other attacks by just a hair. During the fight, Agito had turned his switch on again and reverted back to his formless style. He said that he could not be a master of the Kuroki with just martial arts alone and that he needed more than that. In his 11th hour, Agido had evolved again and was seemingly switching between martial arts and his formless style. However, being the master that he is, Kuroki was able to find a chink in Agido's armor and took advantage of the time it took for Agido to switch between martial arts and his formless style. However, Agido responded by evolving yet again. He was able to shave off his lag time by a few milliseconds, which was enough to drive Kuroki into a corner. But all of this was still in the calculations of the martial arts master that is Kuroki. He continued to elegantly display his martial arts, laying blows on Agido, and staying ahead of his opponent at every turn. The time for the Fang's defeat had come at last, and as Kuroki lands the finishing blow, Agido swears to himself that one day, he will defeat this man. On his way back to his room, Agido ran into Masudo. As he attempted to apologize to his master, it is revealed that Masudo was actually the one who invited Kuroki inside to the tournament. Matsudo had grown tired of acting as king and chairman, and wanted to run into someone that could possibly dethrone him. Upon hearing this, Agido told his master that he was going to resign as a Fang. Both Agido and Masudo agreed that it was time for him to walk a new path. Agido's last appearance in the King of Nashara manga is in the final chapter. He is seen talking to Takiyama Minoru where he states that he had been living in a bubble for too long and that it was time for him to broaden his view of the world. Minoru saw him off and even gave him the keys to his motorcycle, showing that the two are on good terms now. Agido has also made an appearance in the sequel, King and Omega. He is one of the fighters that Yamashita sends Himoru to find in hopes of recruiting for the upcoming bout against Purgatory. Himoru finds Agido, who is now going under the nickname AG, in a biker bar in America. At first, he turns down the request saying that he's already paid back his debt to his former master. But it's revealed that since he's left, Masudo has gone through three successors in just two years. He also learns that the Sixth Fang betrayed Masudo and went over to Purgatory instead because they paid more. Enraged by this, Agido tells Himoru that he will in fact be signing up for the competition so that he can get revenge on the scoundrel that betrayed Masudo. Now onto his powers and abilities. Being the emperor of the king in matches, it's no surprise that Agido is incredibly strong. He is a well-rounded individual who can compete with master class grapplers like Okibo and elite strikers like Gaolong. He's so well-rounded in fact that he can attack from super long range all the way down to an inch away from his body. He has no blind spots and he can continuously chain attacks from different ranges into each other. Due to his great sense of pride, he often chooses to challenge his opponent at what they're best at even if it means putting himself at a disadvantage, as seen in his match against Gao Long. He believes that he can overwhelm any opponent with any style because he is the Fang. However, he is not above throwing away his pride and using tactics if it means victory. Agido does not have one particular fighting style, but instead calls his style formless. He is such a talented fighter that he does not need to rely on one discipline. He allows both his body and mind to move freely and without constraint. In tandem with his formless style, a major component of Agudo's fighting skills revolves around his unique ability to evolve mid-fight. He has a wide arsenal of moves that he can choose from and is able to build perfect counter measures on the fly. However, this isn't to say that his formless style is without weakness. Because his brain is processing so many options, it takes him time to choose the best course of action. Fighters who are specialists, such as Gao Long, can take advantage of this small delay. It's also not ideal to use the formless style in consecutive bouts. Because it takes a great deal of stamina and reflexes, it would be difficult to constantly use in a tournament where Agudo is building up damage. He overcame this weakness by limiting his options when fighting. By throwing away the flexibility of the formless style and by focusing on a few solid techniques, he is also able to do away with the delay. He has also unlocked the ability known as Pre-Initiative. 
This means that you can discern the exact moment that his opponent will start moving and move at the same time in order to land an attack before they can. In his fight against Kuroki Gensai, he showed the ability to flawlessly switch between using martial arts and his formless style. He was able to unleash a devastating barrage of form yet formless and formless yet formed strikes. Of all of his techniques, the one that Agudo deems as the one with the most firepower is his Dragon Shot. It's this variation of Bruce Lee's 1 inch punch and allows him to transfer all of his power into a singular blow. He is also able to use the same indestructible technique that Oma does. During his fight against Gao Long, he tightened his muscles to reduce the damage received from the TIE Fighter. Alright guys, so that was my video on the Feng and Masudo, Kano Agido. This was my longest King and video yet, but if you stuck through the whole thing, then thank you. There was no way I could make a video about the Feng short and I had to give the Emperor of the King and matches his just dues. Before I end the video, I just wanted to let you guys know that I created a Discord server for my YouTube channel. Check it out if you want a place to hang out and chat all things anime and manga. I even made a specific channel for King and related stuff and another one for solo leveling. I'll leave a Discord link in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace!